All right, y'all, as the uh, text on screen suggests, I'm playing a game from Watermelon. And uh, as the title of the video suggests, I'm playing Paprio. So I'm going to talk over the intro a little bit here. Um, yeah, I think this game is awesome. I've been putting off making a video on this, uh, largely because life has been pretty busy for me uh, for the last year. Uh, I started a job at a company that was going public, and uh, as a certified public accountant, that means I was pretty darn busy. Uh, by the same token, I've been kind of, you know, reconnecting with family and friends and uh, just kind of trying to uh, enjoy life as I can, and, uh, well, making these videos is uh, not as big of a priority as it once was, uh, but I, I hope to make a, a few more now that I'm kind of more in a groove and uh, the company I work for has gone public and we're, you know, kind of used to things. Uh, I will say, uh, if you are uh, working for a company that's thinking of going public uh, and you're doing your financial statements 100% in Excel, just stop. Get something better. We did, and it's been night and day. That said, uh, I'm going to start playing a little bit of Paprium here. I'm uh, using my uh, official Paprium Grand Stick 3 joystick, as you can see. So, yes, I was uh, not one of the original backers of the game, but I did, I did pre-order the game when you were able to pre-order it with the joystick option. Uh, and goodness gracious, I don't know, I, I think I pre it three or four years before I actually received the game. So I'm going to go ahead and play the original mode. Uh, as you can see, this save down here is locked. Once you uh, go through a certain route, your save locks and you can no longer play that one again. Um, I think that's kind of a, a lame choice on their part, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, so, my choices here are the second original save that I uh, made, or the Paprium difficulty. I'm going to go ahead and do the original one, just because uh, Paprium difficulty is pretty hard, and it's really challenging to uh, do a video while you're uh, playing on that uh, difficult of a setting. Alright, so... This character is uh, throned, which means uh, if I choose her, I would have to unthrone her. Same with him. So I'm going to go ahead and play this guy right here. He's not one of the best characters, but, you know, he's all right. And uh, that was a tank of bad stuff. That's not what you want to get first thing in the game. It's okay, though. We'll be okay. This is not Paprium difficulty, we'll be fine. I'm sure you can probably hear some of the uh, button presses I'm doing here. Uh, this joystick uses uh, Sanwa buttons and stick, I believe, but it's definitely not silent buttons. One of these days I might mod it for silent buttons, but not today. There is actually a, a secret back there. I could have held the joystick left against the wall and warped all the way to the uh, boss of the stage. That thing I just picked up is a credit card. Uh, instead of money, you pick up credit cards in this game. Makes a lot of sense, to be honest. As you can see by the uh, general playstyle, Paprium's a beat em up game. Of course, anybody watching this video probably already knew that Paprium uh, has a bit of notoriety related to it. Not for any good reasons. That door can only be opened if you clear that section of enemies. I definitely don't want to get a, a second gas thing. It's 
been a while since I've played this game. My original inclination was to uh, make a video where I would I would play on the Paprium difficulty and uh, go through the uh, final section of the game after I had unlocked everything. But to be honest, Paprium difficulty is just a bit of a grind and not as enjoyable as it could be, so... I'll stick to the uh, very hard difficulty. Which, it's funny, this game, the uh, difficulties are uh, not too bad, except for Paprium difficulty. That one is kind of murderous. You play this game and uh, you don't have a joystick, that's cool. I actually think the uh, six button controller is a better way to play the game. But I figured if I was going to make a video, I'd use the official joystick with it. Um, get on this robot here. I mean, to kind of bury the lead and get to the point quickly. I think this is one of the best games ever made for the Sega Genesis, also known as the uh, Mega Drive. Uh, it certainly has some flaws, but I mean, most beat em up games do. Uh, it's repetitive, sure. Uh, the jump kick is ridiculously powerful as a, a strategy, uh, but that comes in handy on Paprium difficulty because. Uh, that, that difficulty will just kick your ass if you let it. And I know a lot of people kind of joked about this game that you could beat it just by jump kicking. Uh, I, that's true on most of the difficulty levels except for Paprium difficulty. Uh, you're not going to beat that one just by jump kicking. I've played through it enough to realize that. I will say in terms of game design and graphical design, I mean, this game is A or A+. Uh, especially if you can find a second person to play with. Uh, it's really fun as a uh, two-player game, just being able to uh, really mangle the uh, CPU. And uh, as a uh, reward for playing two players, the game definitely does not let up on the number of uh, characters it can throw on screen at you. I'm not sure if uh, this game has the most enemies on screen of a Sega Genesis game, but it certainly comes close, if it if it's not. So that thing I did right there, I took a, uh, a pill. Uh, I imagine my cat's tail is in the way there. He wants some snacks that are on the table behind me. Go on, buddy. Go get your snacks. Here, let's, let's help. Come on. Go get your snack. There you go, buddy. Come on. There you go. Gotta make sure the cats are well fed. So the thing I took was a, uh, a pill. Uh, in this game, those those pills, those drugs are your uh, power-up item. Uh, one fun thing about the uh, grand stick here is uh, when you're using it, the uh, A button lights up when you're able to use one of those pills. And... Uh, the joystick itself has a speaker in it that makes, I wouldn't necessarily call them random sounds, but it makes sounds that, that react to what's going on in the game. It's pretty cool. Um, I'm playing this game on my Mega SG, so that feature doesn't always work perfectly, but it's cool when it does. Um, I have played this on both a Model 1 and a Model 2 Sega Genesis, and it works fine there. No problems. Um, I know a lot of people playing this game, or who bought this game, had trouble getting it to load on Jap certain Japanese consoles, European consoles. Um, I had a pretty good experience overall with it, in terms of getting the game to start and, and playing, and haven't noticed any real lag on the Mega SG or any of my other systems. Um, I do know that on certain clone consoles, certain other clone consoles, the game has a ton of lag. Uh, that's intentional. There is actually a code to disable it. If you uh, look on Twitter or search Google, I'm sure you can find it. And that kind of gets into one of the, the worst things about this game, is uh, the people who made it are kind of jerks. Um, I'll get into that in a second, but I want to uh, 
show off something here in a second after I beat these uh, Akira motorcycle driving guys. One thing I do like about the uh, fighting system is uh, you get a button for being able to punch downward, you get your forward punch, uh, you can you double tap to run, you've got a dash attack, you got a pretty decent amount of attacks, amount of attacks. I'm waiting to clear out these guys. See, the thing I wanted to show off is uh, there's a transparency effect on this stage um, that's not very evident when you're playing on a super sharp console. Uh, but since I am playing on the Mega SG here, let me pull up that menu real quick. Go to settings and uh, video, extra features, and enable dither blending. Now, if you're playing this on a CRT, If you were playing this on a CRT, uh, you'd kind of get the same effect. Now, if you notice the, the background here, there's there's kind of transparency going on there. And uh, they basically used the disadvantage of CRT televisions to create uh, transparency effects. And uh, if you play this on a CRT or um, in the basement, I have a plasma television, which um, for whatever reason kind of toes the line between CRT and, and LCD, uh, you can see some pretty neat transparency effects. So I'm going to play with that filter on for the rest of this video, because why not? Uh, dither blending on the Mega SG is a hit or miss feature. I think it works pretty well for Paprium. All right, so we get two choices here. The easy path is up, the uh, tougher path is down. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go downward here. Why not? It's not my intent to beat the whole game. I just kind of want to uh, opine about it, put some gameplay, you know, kind of get a video uploaded because I've been putting it off. I mean, originally I'd, I'd intended to, you know, get play through the, the game on, like I said, on Paprium difficulty. I was going to uh, grab my Model 2 uh hook up my uh, retro tank 5x and you know just basically give it the grand treatment um but to be honest in addition to the fact that i just have you know better things to do these days um i'm really not a fan of the the people that made this game and i just i can't put out the effort which might be construed as promoting a game even though i'm just you know some dude making videos but I can't be putting out that kind of effort for uh, a product, no matter how great it is, if it's made by people who don't treat their customers with a decent level of respect, which they definitely do not. Um, as near as I can tell, they only shipped roughly 90% of the copies of the game. Um, their support has been challenging to say the least to people who didn't get their products. Um, and for those who complained on Twitter or elsewhere, uh, they were basically attacked. Uh, if you go on Twitter and just, you know, search for Paprium and look at the complaints or even their, their recent Kickstarter campaign, which is still going on as I uh, play this game, you'll kind of see that they're very hostile toward the people who actually purchased the game. And, uh, I realized that, you know, they had difficulties with, with funding and, and PayPal, and they had difficulties sourcing parts and all of that. But the fact of the matter is, no matter how difficult things get, you, you can't, you know, mistreat customers who paid you money. You just can't do that. Um, and they're very toxic. And, and it's very unappealing. Um, and, uh... They had a track record even before Paprium of shipping things late, and so when I pre-ordered, you know, they weren't exactly... They didn't exactly have the greatest track record or the record for best customer service, but it got much worse after that. 
But, you know, I saw the people who were asking for refunds never getting refunds, so I'm like, you know, screw it. Uh, I pre-ordered so long ago that it's not really a loss to me if I don't get anything or if time passes. Um, so I just kind of, you know, waited it out. And in February of this year, 2021, I received my copies of the game along with the uh, joystick. Uh, in terms of the product itself, I'm very happy. The joystick is spectacular. The game itself is pretty damn awesome. Um, I recently sold my spare copy of the game. Um, hopefully the uh, person that got it enjoys it. Uh, I will say they're expensive on the secondary market, but I will give props for the fact that if you do buy a copy on eBay or wherever, you know you're going to receive it, so that's good. Um, which kind of gets me into commentary on their current Kickstarter that they've got going on. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think... You know, it's worth, it, it's a game that's worth playing. And, you know, they say they're going to make it available digitally and physically on the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, uh, the uh, current Xbox consoles. Um, I think they uh, passed their Switch, Nintendo Switch goal. Um, they're also making more 16-bit copies of the game. Um, both regular and limited edition. Um, I'll say for my part, I prefer the regular edition version of the game. The limited edition version comes with more paper goodies, but the box itself is also made of paper and flimsy and just not impressive. Actually, look at this transparent uh, cloud or vapor down here. Uh, yeah, with dither blending enabled, this just looks awesome. I think that's a it's a it's a nice feature of the Mega SG. Although I will say, if you have a, a CRT, it'll look even better. Unfortunately, I didn't get on that guy's back quick enough, and it moved me to the next section here. Too bad. That's okay. There's a, a secret here after I beat up this guy. So up here, X marks the spot. Now we're in a forest area that's a, a little bit too bright because I have that uh, filter on. If you play through this section on the uh, Paprium difficulty, uh, a good number of time chickens appear. Uh, it's kind of a crazy thing. So as I was saying, there's a Kickstarter going on as I'm playing this. Um, they've got various versions of the game going on. Uh, I think to get a digital copy of the game, the minimum you have to pledge is $24. Which, you know, I, I, I look at the Kickstarter as I look at playing the lottery or going to a casino. Uh, only pledge the amount you can afford to lose. And uh, I, I'm doing that because I would like another copy of the game. Um, they've got so many Dan Stretch goals. Uh, they've got a, a pledge level that you can get a, a Paprium, Paprium command, Compendium book. That is tough to say together. A Paprium Compendium book. Uh, stretch goals to get Game Gear versions of the game. PlayStation 4. Like, I don't know. I think they've promised, what, like 10 different versions of the game now? Different regions and all of that? Uh, they've got a Grand Stick 4 that they're planning, which is just the Grand Stick 3, but with 8 buttons and cables for other systems. One thing I will say, the uh, Grand Stick 3, out of the box, seems to work natively with a bunch of systems. You just need the right cable for it. Um, I have a, a DB9 extension cable for my Neo Geo, and uh, yeah, this joystick works great with a Neo Geo. That is the sax man who appears pretty frequently, especially on the uh, harder levels of the game. Uh, the scary thing is he looks a lot like one of the uh, developers of the game, Fonzie, who's also the uh, primary guy who uh, is toxic as hell to customers. So, 
I mean, if you if you look up the track record, like I said, there's a lot of people who never received their copies of the game that they paid for. And now they're doing a Kickstarter, which is up to like $600,000, and they're promising like 10 different versions of the game, more joystick hardware. They're promising to ship the people who never received their copies of the game their stuff. They're making a lot of promises. Um, and based on their track record, I have no doubt that eventually they will fulfill some of those backers' pledges. Um, do I think it's going to be 100%? No, I, I honestly don't. Their track record doesn't suggest that. Um, but their track record does suggest, yeah, probably 80 or 90%. So, you know, it's kind of like gambling. Um, if you do pledge, there is a 20% chance you're not going to get anything. And uh, no matter how Kickstarter's rules go or your uh, credit card company's rules go, by the time the pre-order window goes, your uh, right to be able to do chargebacks or anything probably is going to have expired. If you... Uh, Three, five of those guys who are stuck there in those little traps or whatever the hell they are. Uh, you get an extra life. Which is very important, because uh, on a Paprium difficulty, you can get extra lives after you pass certain score levels or beat, in, beat certain stages. Uh, but on Paprium difficulty, they're much more stingy. And just look how many people are on screen right now. It's, it's ridiculous. I mean, I think it's uh, awesome. Like, just how many characters can be on a screen at once, how goofy the uh, character designs are. I mean, it's a very unique game, a very fun game. I mean, look at this. I'm riding on this guy's back and using him as a freaking weapon. That, that's just awesome. Which is very good against these little bastards here. These alien bastard things are pain in the butt. Especially on Paprium difficulty. I knew there was somebody coming. That guy standing right there is a uh, mini boss who appears a lot, Rondo. Pretty easy to beat if you got one of these guys. You don't want to get hit by him, though. Uh, one hit from him, depending on how he hits, you can just straight up kill you. Thankfully, it's usually like two hits that does it, though. And we beat him pretty easy here. This Chinatown stage is, uh, kind of racist. I will say that much. Uh, the design is pretty unique, though. And, uh, if this game had come out in 1994 or 95, yeah. I have no doubt that this entire design would have would have passed scrutiny. Because back, back in those times, the only thing they cared about were, uh, bad words, blood, and, uh, naked women. And uh, by this time, you could get away with uh, bad words and naked women. You just... Or, I'm sorry, bad words and blood. You just couldn't get away with nudity. Well, this game actually has a little bit of nudity. Uh, depending on how you look for it. Um, unfortunately, a couple of the uh, 
enemy characters uh, in spots have their testicles plainly visible. Thanks, Fonzie. Or Luis, whoever designed those graphics. You are the stuff of nightmares. So to finish my thought from before, which I'm baiting pretty bad about that during this video, um, if you are planning to pledge the Kickstarter, pledge only the amount you can lose, because like I said, there's a 20% chance you're not going to get anything, especially if you're going for the uh, longer term stretch goals. I have no doubt that they will get this game out digitally on the uh, PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. And uh, probably physically, too, especially if they partner with some group like Limited Run or Special Reserve. They haven't said how they're publishing, uh, but I have no doubt that they'll get this out for at least the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5, and a good chance the uh, Xbox consoles. Uh, as for the Switch and everything else, I think that's a taller order for this group, um, based on their track record. And so those are the uh, goals I find more dubious. Uh, also, the new physical editions, the 16-bit uh, versions, and the uh, Game Gear version. Uh, they're going to be able to manufacture, most likely, a certain amount of those. But let's face it, um, at some point, the money that they have is going to run out. And if uh, their customer service holds, they'll come up with various excuses as to why. But the bottom line is, 10 or 20% of people who pledge them money are not going to get what they paid for. And that's the thing. They, they like to come up with excuses rather than solutions and transparency. Um, and they're a company who's definitely been the uh, Ponzi scheme, or Fonzie scheme as you want to call it, in terms of fulfillment, which is basically their... Uh, Subsequent funding tends to clean up the mess from the previous round of funding. Oof, I died. Lost a life. Too bad. So sad. That's okay. On this save, that's I still got plenty of lives. But that has been their, their track record. Is uh, You know, I, I honestly can <laughs> usually beat this guy's butt clean. Doing it while talking is challenging. challenge for me. And I hate to admit it, too. I, I'm not exactly good at driving while talking, either. I'm resorting to the jump kick of doom. I'm gonna shut up for a little bit here. I love the music on this stage. I love how these guys attack you on this car, and uh, you basically kill that guy and it drives itself, um, but if uh, you beat them and don't kill him, uh, it keeps going. You actually have to beat that guy to death to be able to stop the car. So technically, I think he's an enemy. adore the uh, music design, the sound design in this game. The sound effects are pretty awesome and hilarious. 
Even though there's not a diverse array of them, they're definitely um, super appropriate. The uh, music itself is, is great. Um, there's an onboard FPGA, FPGA processor in the game, which, in addition to making it very difficult to copy the game, also allows them to uh, play more audio than the Genesis normally be able to do. I think it's also used for uh, decryption of some graphics. Bottom line, it does make the game very difficult to copy. Uh, there is a group right now that is working to uh, dump and emulate the game. I have no doubt that they will eventually succeed. And to be honest, I think that's a good thing. Um, normally, I, I kind of frown upon pirating games from uh, authors that are still trying to make money off of their products. Um, especially these days when you can, you know, officially pay for something on like itch.io. But with how toxic the uh, creators of this game have been and how they've mistreated their customers, you know, honestly, I'm not, I won't be too sad if uh, Project Little Man, as it's called, succeeds. I mean, heck, they named it Project Little Man because uh, many of the people who complained about the customer service on this game online were called Little Men or Little Man. And, you know, it's funny one or two times, but when it becomes a constant theme and mistreating your customers becomes something you're known for, well, I, I can't really get behind that. So I'm, I'm definitely a, a fan of anybody trying to make it easier to play this game because I think it is worth it. It's worth owning. Uh, you know, if you're the sort that feels comfortable backing the Kickstarter, then hey, feel free. Uh, but if you'd rather, you know, wait and emulate the game and at Project Little Man succeeds, I say more power to you in that regard too. Or heck, you know, do the best of both worlds. If you know you're going to uh, pirate the game once you're able to do so, maybe, you know, throw the Kickstarter a few bucks. Throw it like 20, 25 bucks or whatever the uh, digital copy is. That way, you know, if you're, if they don't fulfill their uh, order, at least you know you're still able to play the game in some regards. All right, we're going to use a pill right here. Yes, I'm resorting to the jump kick of doom. The rain and water effects are just spectacular on this stage. just bad timing on my part. I didn't notice her back there doing the electricity. She's just hiding back there.
that door up there is another secret path. I'm not going to take it because uh, I want to actually go to the end of this stage. Uh, but that would be a, a way to go back up to the upper levels of the game and end up at like the police station. One of my favorite things about this game is just how many different paths there are through it. I think there's like eight or nine. And the designs of, of each of the paths are very radically different. There are apartments that you can go through. Uh, there's a medical center stage. One of my favorite stages to go through is the uh, drug production and storage facility. Which is hilarious because there's bags of the uh, drugs just laying around, and when you kick them, they explode clouds of uh, the drug, which powers you up. There is a bit of a drawback to uh, using too much of it. Um, you'll see that blue bar up there is increasing every time I use it, and it kind of sticks with you every time you play through the game. Once the blue bar gets too high, um, your attacks are less effective, and it's easier for you to get winded. Um, but you can fix that by taking a certain route through the game. All right, the uh, boss of this, well, the mid-boss of this stage is coming up here. I don't know how to refer to it. Boss, mid-boss. Anyways, after I beat these knife guys, some bad juju is about to happen. Ouch, Jesus. Seriously, dude? Don't know how much more I need to play, so I think after I get through this boss, I'm probably going to call it good. Uh, you know, I think I've said my piece on the game. It's spectacular. Uh, the people behind it. Some of them are decent, but unfortunately the key ones are not. And uh, so I say if you want to play the game, you know, try to back the digital version or uh, buy a copy on eBay. At least you'll guarantee you'll get it. I find that is the best thing to do is to uh, route one of those guys through his friend. Getting a little impatient here. I could have done it the slow way, but nah. Use the drugs. Do it the quick way. So yeah, with that, uh, that's Paprium, and I'm out of here. See ya!